Hello and welcome back and that's right it's time for another SSD face off with the PS5. That's right we are looking at M2 SSD expansion upgrades and now the feature is fully enabled for everyone we can take a good look at how these SSDs do compare. Now if you aren't looking at the top tier SSDs your Samsung 980s, your Fire CUDA 530s, your WD Blacks because of them not being available in your area the price is going up for any number of reasons then a lot of people are looking at these slightly lesser known SSDs which in some cases actually exceed the overall performance of those three top tier ones that I've just mentioned and do it at a better price point. I am talking of course about the Corsair MP600 uh, which again from memory manufacturers Corsair is a solid SSD that we've talked about there in the past. The MSI Spatium, uh, the M480 there, one of the earliest PS5 rated SSDs and again a great little performer overall. The A-Data Gamix, the XPG which I've just realised is just behind me here. This is the S70 SSD here with an inclusive heatsink and a decent little price point there. And of course, at the end, the Gigabyte Aurorus, one of the earliest SSDs we tested there, the S, uh, the 7000S. All four of these SSDs are ones that don't seem to capture the limelight of some of those bigger universal global brands. But in terms of PC gamer communities are exceedingly well known and PS5 buyers looking to upgrade their storage are now becoming very, very aware of these arguably better priced SSDs, which although have lower write performance than some of those top tier ones we've mentioned, and lower IOPS performance, not breaking into the millions, they counter that point by having solid sequential read performance there, inclusive heatings in a number of plug cases, and just better pricing overall. So, I'm going to be going through Lots and lots of tests that we've gone through before with many, 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 many games that we've tested previously. We've done like 2025, something like that. So, as we go through all of these, it's worth bearing a few things in mind. First and foremost, these are different capacities in some cases. The majority of these SSDs are 1TB with one 500 gig model in there, but all of them are rated in excess of 7,000 to 7,100 megabytes per second sequential read. And although there's a slight disparity there in terms of sequential read performance, the system is already kind of bottlenecking that anyway. So again, that's not really going to be a factor. If we were looking at sequential write, that would be a very different story indeed. But luckily, it's less of a factor in what we are doing here right now. Also, all of these tests were conducted on this PS5. This is my PS5. They're all conducted on the same system. So again, there's that uniformity. There's no question here that the SSDs have been used in other systems, which introduces a random factor. These have all been tested on this. The way this is going to be conducted is we're going to do a four-way split screen, loading these individual games one test session per game we're going to go through it see how they compare and we're going to do a nice voiceover going through all of them live and at the end of the video we're going to see which game won each round because in most cases the difference in loading can be broken down into frames to such a small point that ultimately in some games cases there's absolutely no difference and what difference there is is almost impossible to see by the eye but there are cut times when an ssd clearly loads faster than another so we'll be going through each of the tests in real time and then at the end we'll be going through that frame by frame analysis so i will see you at the end of the video let's get on with the testing shall we so we're going to go with test number one that is borderlands 3 the full game load from the playstation menu there all four ssds kicking off at exactly the same time there but remember what we're looking out for is claptrap when he moves across the screen but that gigabyte had a bit of a delay there early doors. I don't know if you guys saw that on the bottom left. Um, you may hear the fan from my laptop ramping up a little bit during this. I've got a few kind of screens running at once here. So I apologize in advance if you hear the fan noise ramp up a little bit there on the audio. But straight away, look at Claptrap there. There's definitely a delay there on the gigabyte at the, beneath, at the bottom there. Which really surprises me because I kind of thought this SSD would be absolutely killing it early doors. But for now, it looks like it's likely going to be the Corsair or the Spatium. Let's have a quick look and... Yeah, yeah but for me, that was the MSI Spatium. We will, of course, be going through these on frame-by-frame -frame analysis later. But for now, we can carry on to test number two. This is a save load test. This is title screen to loading of the World of Pandora, all four kicking off exactly the same time from the same change frame uh, on the main menu there with uh, this is completely offline as well and looking at the gigabyte proving itself a little bit more loading lovely and fast exactly what i would have wanted to see in the previous test moving into the next one star wars jedi fallen order this is a whole world test this is one of the dullest uh, loading screens to watch i've got to say i've watched this many many times in the other videos um 
what we're looking at right now is how quickly it's going to be loading into the world. There's going to be a lot of black screen here fading in. So again, this is where that frame by frame analysis comes in. I think the Corsair got it there. If I had to, you know, I will be going through the frame by frame stuff later on. We've already chopped it down ready. Next in Rays of the Light, uh, this is a world test for all the title screen. As this is an indie game, every test we've done so far has proven that these games generally load exactly the same time i'm pretty sure that's absolutely the same due to uh, less efficient techniques being used i wouldn't be surprised if that's going to be a dead heat tie between two or all of the games on different ssds for now let's move into our next test this is going to be subnautica loading into the world of subnautica there in the background and again this is a creative mode we're loading into here with lots of little details there on screen. They're slightly small for me. I'm sure you guys can see the percentages, uh, which one's going to load the quickest. Again, most of the SSDs really did pale in comparison to the internal SSD. But here on this screen right now, while we're watching these all load up, here we go, we're moving in. And yep, the Corsair took it there. I've got to say, that's not going to be in any way disputable later on. The Corsair definitely won this one. And we're moving into the halfway point for the games. Uh, into Oddworld Soulstorm here and again this is loading from the title screen into an early area of the game again this is another game that we've seen with different SSDs being largely identical I feel like the Spatium was ahead possibly by a couple of frames but barely anywhere enough to consider any kind of difference to be perfectly honest remember this is about longevity next up Hitman 3 going into a world test here and again loading from a mission into it none of the opening cut scenes but although there was obviously the panning camera shot and we're going to see how quickly it loads into it again i think i felt like the right hand side of the screen took it there the corsair or the spatium but we'll know more uh, once we've got this loaded up i'll be honest a gigabyte for me i'm surprised we're not seeing more from the gigabyte perhaps the frame by frame analysis will prove me a bit wrong but for me kind of thought we'd see it higher on the board now um, terminator resistance this is loading into the terminator mode and uh, this is going to have that um, opening cinematic which we can kind of gauge uh, as a way of seeing which one loads it in definitely the left hand side of the screen took it for me and as we analyze that the left hand side looks identical to me so right now it's going to be a datas or gigabytes to lose on this game as we see them both loading up side by side they really are a mirror image right now between the two of them and i think for now the ones on the right hand side of the screen there they're fractionally you know behind tenths of seconds really and i know in a lot of this testing a number of you will highlight who cares about tenths of seconds and i grant you that but when you go to the more enterprise level games you do notice the difference and you've got to think long term both in terms of multiplayer response time and in terms of when they eat more out of this system but for now yeah the left hand side of the screen if that's not a flat tie then i think the gigabyte loaded the quickest but again we'll know more in the frame by frame analysis now into no man's sky a world test bear in mind there's a large element of random to this unfortunately it's very very tough to track this also there is the drop in frame rate that no man's sky always has in the loading screen room regardless of which system or ssd you use it's unavoidable and right now we're looking at which ssd has loaded into the world the quickest um, I feel like the Spatium has kind of lagged behind. Uh, yep, left hand side of the screen. Yep, definitely the A data and the Gigabyte. I remember during the A data testing when we saw the character fall out of the sky. But yes, there we go, moving forward. Again, that was Gigabyte or A data there. Next, moving into Red Dead Redemption, our second to last game. And we're having a look there, all loading in at exactly the same uh, frame change at the Press X screen. And now we've got these kind of. Uh, vignette images getting flicked between so let's see what the synchronicity is it feels right now that they're running a near identical um, loading time so it's going to be interesting to see which one of these kicks in first or is this going to be our first four-way tie on Red Dead Redemption 2 we're still they're all running you know mirror perfect against one another throughout the loading sequence which is kind of semi on rails so will they all be introduced into the world together no the a data definitely took that one by a comfortable margin there i mean i think the gigabyte have done some good work in the last few games i'll be interested to see if they're going to grab the last one but for now 
you know, the, the A data must have taken that one, but of course we'll know more and by how much in the frame by frame analysis. Moving into our last game, uh, which is Dead by Daylight, we can have a little look and see how things have gone for this title. So again, all loading from the same screen. I know it looks like they've all been loaded in at different speeds, but it really is hold circle button. It checked its settings and parameters. All of these were kicked off from that screen at exactly the same time. It doesn't look that way, but they really are. The game has to do a bunch of stuff in the background. Some of it, mm, yep, the Gigabyte took that one by a good third, maybe even half a second into our last title. That one might have popped it, if not first, then definitely in second place. But now we're going to go through the results of each of these SSDs and which SSD took each game. Now remember, this is about which one got there first and it's loading in-game assets. We're not including uh, cutscenes, we're only counting in-game playable assets first. So let's have a little look. And the first game, of course, as mentioned, the MSI Spatium took Borderlands 3, our first test. Again, comfortable win. Again, Gigabyte laying behind, but making up for it in the second test where the Gigabyte there loading into the world in eight seconds, um, taking Borderlands 2, uh, the second test, I should say. In the third test, of course, there, comfortable margin there, taking Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, loading into the world. Our next test here, um, again, four-way tie. We keep seeing that in Rays of the Light. It's common it's the way the game is built it's not able to take advantage of that performance next we can look at subnautica again the corsair took that one comfortably gotta say so again it looks like the corsair should be leading we'll get the scores at the end and then we moved into odd world and again odd world a two-way tie there at the bottom with the msi and the gigabyte loading in at near enough identical frames there from the background cutscene into the world. In terms of Hitman 3, the Corsair takes another point. It must comfortably be in the lead. I think it's from this point we started seeing the Gigabyte appear on the board a little bit more. Yep, the A Data and Gigabyte both sharing exactly the same there. So getting a point each for Terminator Resistance. Now moving into our third to last game in um, a No Man's Sky. Again, shared points there for a data and gigabyte now going into uh, that of uh, red dead redemption 2 and again the a data and gigabyte sharing the podium once again we're noticing that on the more aggressive games the a data and gigabyte are ranking more and finally uh, with dead by daylight another point for gigabyte so we've already tallied up the scores in the background which you're about to see on screen but do bear in mind these are minute differences in some cases just a handful of frames and it doesn't mean that one ssd is particularly bad it's just about minute differences and as you can see there the gigabyte took it comfortably there with seven points the corsair got a lot of soul points i think a lot of the gigabyte in the a data points it should be added though were ones where it was kind of side by side they got there together so as much as i'd love to give half points i'm not going to um because i think half points in this context don't make sense but nevertheless of these four ssds the gigabyte was the one that loaded the games on these occasions the quickest repeat performances or returning to this later may change things thank you so much for watching i hope you've enjoyed this video don't take this video as any kind of slight or negativity towards any one of these ssds they've all performed remarkably well and are all fully supported by the playstation 5 ssd upgrade now it is officially available for everyone we've got more ssd comparisons to work through two or three i believe which will be coming very very soon if you have enjoyed this do click like if you want to learn more click subscribe and click the bell to be notified of the other comparisons and of course all of the ssds that i talk about in these videos along with recommended heat sinks and guides for different heat sinks different ssds and recommended specs are linked to in the description thank you so much for watching and i will see you next time